Hey, what's going on? My name is Lewis Raskin with Crypto Elite, and in today's video, we're gonna be going over what is Bitcoin. In this video, you're gonna be learning what Bitcoin actually is and how it could actually change the world. So I'll take myself off the screen and let's get started. Bitcoin is a technological tour de force. This is by Bill Gates. Really, Bitcoin is the biggest financial innovation of the past century, probably even more than that. Bitcoin is a form of money or currency that is not controlled by banks. Similar to how the internet is not controlled by any one person or corporation, but it is available to anyone in the world because of its underlying platform, so is Bitcoin. Because Bitcoin is not controlled by any central entity, it is decentralized. That's why people call it a decentralized form of currency. Bitcoin is also entirely digital. There is no paper money or things to physically hold in your hand with Bitcoin and crypto. It's all online. That's why it's called the first decentralized digital currency. You may not be aware of this, but money as we know it right now is primarily digital. Most of the money in the world today is simply digits recorded in ledgers by banks. If everyone were to withdraw their funds from the banks at the same time, the banks would not be able to give everyone their money because of the fact that most of it is digital. Bitcoin, because it's decentralized, doesn't deal with banks. With Bitcoin, you are the sole owner and the gatekeeper. It's up to you to keep your Bitcoin safe. There has actually been many forms of decentralized currencies throughout history. Think of how seashells used to be used as a currency. There was no seashell bank that controlled the supply of seashells and recorded every transaction on a ledger. The owner of the seashell simply owned it. And when they wanted to buy something, they would trade their seashells for what they were buying. Remember, money is nothing more than a medium of exchange. The thing that gives money value is the fact that people believe it has value. Even today in Kenya, the currency is self phone minutes. They use the minutes on their Nokia cell phones to buy groceries. Many people dismiss Bitcoin and say that it has no real value because it isn't backed up by anything. I'm not sure if these people understand that the fiat currency currently used isn't backed up by anything tangible either. A good way to understand crypto is to know a little bit about money in general. Like I mentioned, money is simply a medium of exchange used to exchange value. Seashells, spices, metals, and gold have all been forms of money. Gold was the standard currency used in America for quite some time. Eventually, people thought of the idea that if they could store their gold in a bank and they can get paper in the form of gold certificates saying that they own the gold, then that would be a lot easier than carrying around heavy chunks of gold everywhere. This was called the gold standard, where every piece of paper money was backed up by gold. This lasted up until the 1970s, when we went off the gold standard. This is when we switched over to fiat currency. Fiat, funny enough, means it shall be, which means that we give it value because we chose to give it value or we choose to give it value, not because it has any inherent property that is valuable. Over the past decade or two, money has increasingly become more digital. With the use of cards and apps like Apple Pay, less and less people are carrying around actual fiat money. Today, banks control the money supply. When you use a credit card or deposit or withdraw your money from a bank, they input that amount into a ledger they control. The money is centralized within the banking system. In this system, we put our trust in the banks. Bitcoin is the first invention to create a ledger that isn't dependent on one central authority. It's decentralized. This decentralized ledger is called the blockchain. By creating a decentralized platform, we put our trust in the network and the mathematics the platform uses. We aren't putting our trust in a bank, a company, an organization, or an individual. We are putting our trust in the underlying framework that the system is built upon. This is called a trustless system. Because of the fact that Bitcoin is decentralized and is built upon the internet, that means that as long as someone has access to the internet, they can get Bitcoins. This has major implications for the over 2 billion people on this planet that do not have any access to the traditional banking system. It also helps those in countries with corrupt banking systems and governments that inflate their currencies and that make it harder to purchase anything. It also will help to connect the world because you don't have to exchange your Bitcoin for another currency when you travel to another country. It's universal. Bitcoin gives personal freedom to money. Many people refer to Bitcoin as internet money. And while it is certainly a form of currency used on the internet, a more accurate description would be to call Bitcoin the internet of money. Bitcoin is digital, decentralized, durable, transportable, and unable to be counterfeit. It's capped off, so it can't be created out of thin air and cause inflation like the US dollar or other fiat currencies. 
it can't be manipulated by the government. And this is really important because you could see how that works out by looking at what happened to Greece, Venezuela, and other countries. Bitcoin is also divisible, meaning that it can be broken down into incredibly small parts. You don't need to own an entire Bitcoin. You can own a fraction of a Bitcoin. Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies are borderless. With cryptocurrencies, you could send your digital currency around the world in minutes for very minimal fees. Right now, if you wanted to transfer money from America to England, you would have to go to your bank when it's open, fill out the paperwork, pay a substantial fee, and wait days to weeks for it to clear. It is faster to get on a plane, fly to England, and physically hand your money to the recipient. With crypto, all of that is eliminated. So how did it even start? Well, Bitcoin was created out of desperation after the global financial meltdown in 2008. It was created by an anonymous figure called Satoshi Nakamoto. No one knows who he is. Satoshi Nakamoto released a white paper called Bitcoin, Peer-to-Peer -peer Electronic Cash System. And in 2009, the first Bitcoin transaction was made. So how does it work? Well, Bitcoin works by using something called the blockchain. Without getting into too many details, the blockchain is the public ledger of Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. Once a certain number of transactions are created, they are bunched together into a block. This block is encrypted, which makes it difficult to get into an alter. Every time a new block is made, it is added to the previous block. This makes altering transactions nearly impossible because if someone wanted to alter a transaction, it would mess up the entire blockchain and people, called miners, would notice. These people who keep the blockchain running and make sure it is secure are called miners. There are thousands and thousands of miners around the world, and they use high-tech computers to solve cryptographic problems and add transactions to the blocks, and blocks to the blockchain. Miners get paid a small percentage of each transaction in cryptocurrency, which is their incentive. When transactions go through the blockchain, a total consensus has to be achieved in order for it to be validated. This consensus is issued through things called nodes that hold entire records of every single transaction that ever happened. The nodes have rules programmed into them and communicate with each other to make sure that everyone is on the same page. This makes the blockchain incredibly secure. It also makes transactions immutable, which basically means that they are set in stone. Once you send someone money on the blockchain, it is now their money. And for my final words, the last thing I wanna say is this. People are losing trust in our government. There's the never ending wars in the Middle East. There was the Snowden effect. There was Occupy Wall Street. Brexit happened. The Federal Reserve is printing trillions and trillions of dollars and we are getting in more and more debt. Iceland, Greece, Germany, and Venezuela all suffer the consequences of a misused financial system. Crypto takes that trust that we put into the government and into these financial institutions, and it puts it into a network or a platform of mathematical equations. While Bitcoin itself might not end up being the final cryptocurrency that gets widely adopted, the underlying network, which is the blockchain technology, is undoubtedly the future.